The first stage of the inflammatory process causes the spinal nerves to become enlarged and swollen as shown here. In addition to the swelling of the nerves, there is distension of the adjacent blood vessels which become hyperemic. As the nerves swell, the subarachnoid space actually disappears and very typically the spinal fluid is squeezed out from in between the spinal nerves. The limitation of this is the dural sac itself. As time progresses, the second stage begins, and this is of nerve atrophy. Scarring begins to increase, and the production of collagen fibrils by the fibroblasts produces scar tissue which causes the nerves to adhere not only to each other, but directly to the arachnoid and to the dura. This animation shows the progression of this atrophy with production of less hyperemia with diminishing size of the distended local blood vessels and increasing amounts of scar tissue. You will note the scar tissue tends to envelop not only the nerve roots, but any foreign body droplets that are attached and held in place. As the scar tissue continues to be deposited the nerves become more adherent to each other and you will notice that they almost become part of the wall of the fecal sac. The fecal sac refers to the various layers of the dura and the arachnoid. The progression of scar tissue can be such that if one enters this dural cavity, one cannot recognize normal nerves. A lumbar puncture in a case like this can actually sever a spinal nerve because it is held fixed and can, cannot float away from the needle once it is placed. Various patterns of scar tissue can be formed. These can be appreciated on imaging studies, particularly MRI.